Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to compute the deflections of a reinforced concrete beam using ACI 31819. The goal of this video is to compute the immediate deflections under live load for this particular beam right here and compare that to the permissible limits according to ACI 318. Now that raises a couple questions. First, what load should we be using? Second, what is the stiffness and how do we actually calculate that deflection? And third, what is the permissible limit according to ACI? So we're gonna answer those three questions before we dive into this example. First, a point on the loading, we're going to have to distinguish strength versus service. Now, we're very used to strength. Strength is where we're computing the failure loads of the particular beam. That could be under moment or shear, axis force or torsion. And we're generally using the factored loads according to LRFD. So factored loads, for example, would be 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. These are effectively the maximum or ultimate loads that that beam could carry. So we're applying these extra factors of safety. Now with service, we're not going to do that because service is going to be a check under day-to-day -day loads and deflection is a serviceability check. So I want to make sure that my deflections are not too large under the day-to-day -day loads. So instead of doing factors, we're gonna use unfactored loads and that's just simply dead plus live. No load factors, just dead plus live right here. Once you have the loads, you then have to consider how you're going to calculate the deflections. And regardless of what method you use, deflection calculations always need two numbers, a modulus of elasticity and a moment of inertia. So what are we gonna use for these for a reinforced concrete beam? For the modulus of elasticity, we're going to be using the concrete modulus. In this video, I'm going to use the provisions from 19221B for just normal strength concrete, normal weight concrete. And so this would be 57,000 times the square root of F prime C, where all these values are going to be in pounds per square inch. Now for the moment of inertia, we have to consider that we're going to have a cracked beam, but it may not be cracked everywhere equally. So for this simple example, we could have a lot of cracking right there in the middle, but maybe the two ends are effectively uncracked. So we need to have some kind of what ACI calls effective moment of inertia to get some effective stiffness along the length of this beam. So effective moment of inertia defined by I sub E. This expression has actually changed in the 2019 version of the code. It's different from the 2014. It has a lot of the same terms though. So we need a cracked moment of inertia right here. And then we're also going to have an uncracked moment of inertia representing the gross moment of inertia right here. That's I sub G. And then my moments MCR is my cracking moment. And then MA is going to be the applied moment. And the applied moment that we're going to be doing is generally speaking, the largest moment in your beam. So there's my applied moment M sub A, and it's calculated under service conditions. So no load factors, just dead plus live, or just dead, whatever load you happen to have on that structure. You'll notice there's an extra two thirds factor right here. That factor is basically a factor of safety uh, for your cracking moment that can account for other sources of cracking. So for example, shrinkage and other things like that, restraint may cause cracking even before you reach that cracking moment. So the two thirds is there as effectively a factor of safety for your cracking moment. Now, last thing to consider with this particular equation, if your applied moment is less than or equal to two thirds of your cracking moment, it's uncracked. So just use I gross. You're not going to use this equation at all because you have an uncracked beam. So you just use the uncracked moment inertia I gross. Lastly, we need those deflection limits, and ACI has four different cases where we can look at deflection limits. We're gonna be focusing on these first two right here for flat roofs and floors that are not supporting or attached to non-structural elements likely to be damaged. In this cases, we're looking at immediate deflections due to either roof live snow or rain load if you're dealing with a roof, or your live load if you're dealing with a floor. And your deflection limits are a function of your span length, which is the capital L here, span length divided by 180 or 360. Now, if you are connected to non-structural elements that are or are not likely to be damaged, then you have to go down to the second case and you may need to check two different scenarios. This also includes time-dependent deflections or long-term deflections. We're not gonna cover that in this video, so we're gonna focus on those first two cases of just the immediate deflection. But it turns out even in this lower case here where you have non-structural elements, you're also going to have to find that immediate deflection, just your 
in addition, going to have to find a long-term deflection too. So that out of the way, let's dive into the example problem. So for this particular problem, my beam is going to be a 12 inch wide by 24 inch deep section. I have some compression steel here and tension steel as well. Concrete strength is gonna be five KSI, typical grade 60 steel and my loads are given down here. So dead load is going to be 0.3 kips per foot. That's just the self weight of this beam. I'm not gonna have any other dead load on there. And then it has an additional live load of 0.9 kips per foot distributed over the whole beam. So I'm not gonna pattern this live load in any way. And my goal is to calculate the immediate deflection due to the live load only. Now, even though I'm looking at deflection for live load only, I can't just put live load on the beam because the dead load is always there. And I need to know my level of cracking to get the proper eye effective. So what we're going to be doing to calculate the live load deflection is we'll actually calculate the deflection of dead plus live, and then I'll subtract off the deflection from the dead alone because those two different load cases will actually have different levels of cracking and therefore different eye effective. So to begin, we're gonna to have to find all of our section properties and we'll start off with the uncracked section right here. And the first number that we're going to need is a gross moment of inertia. That's just 1 12th base times height cubed. So in this case, it's 1 12th, it's 12 inches wide and 24 inches deep and cube that. And that's going to be 13, 8, 24 inches to the fourth for my gross moment of inertia. Next, I need the modulus of rupture, which is defined in 19231. Modulus of rupture given by F sub R is 7.5 times the square root of F prime C, where we gotta make sure that's in PSI as always. And my answer is gonna be in PSI too. So this is 7.5 times the square root of 5,000 PSI, and that is 530 PSI for my modulus of rupture. Lastly, I need the cracking moment, that's MCR, and this is going to be equal to FR times the gross moment of inertia divided by the distance to get to the tension fiber of your section. So effectively, this is the distance from your centroid of your section down to the tension fiber. In this case, because it's 24 inches deep, it's just half that, so 12 inches. So this is going to be 530 PSI multiplied by I gross, which is 13,824 inches to the fourth, divided by the distance to that tension fiber, which is 12 inches. And this is 610,940 pound inches. And I'm gonna put that into kip feet because that's a little bit more convenient. That's 50.9 kip feet. Uh, to do that conversion, we're just dividing by 12,000. So numbers here going forward that I'm gonna need, I definitely need my gross moment of inertia and I'm also gonna need this cracking moment of 50.9 kip feet. So now that we have our uncracked section, let's look at the cracked section. First thing I'm going to need is the modulus elasticity, which I'm just going to compute using the standard normal weight concrete equation in PSI. So this is 57,000 times square root of F prime C in PSI. And if I convert that to KSI, it's 4,031 KSI. Now for the transform section, I'm going to need the modular ratio N, which is defined by the modulus of steel divided by the modulus of concrete. The purpose of this is basically to convert all my materials into a single one reference material, which in this case will be concrete. So modulus of steel is always 29,000 KSI. My modulus for my concrete is 4,031 KSI. And so this modular ratio is about 7.2. Now to do this conversion, I'm gonna have cracking up to some level in my beam. So any concrete below there is basically ineffective. So my transform section is going to look like a rectangle here. And then I'm also gonna have transformed steel areas here for my compression steel and then a steel area down here for my tension steel. And those values are going to be for compression steel, it's N minus one times the area of the compression steel. N minus one is just so we don't double count the area that that steel used to occupy because it's taking up some of my concrete here. So calculating that out, my area of steel is 0.88 square inches and N minus one is about 6.2. So this is 5.45 inches squared. And then tension steel, it's not displacing any useful concrete. So that's just N times AS where my AS for three number eights is 2.37 square inches. So altogether, this is 17.05 inches squared. Now my goal with this is to find this depth to neutral axis C, and I don't know what that is. And so on the next slide, that is what we're going to do. 
Now, in order to find C, we're trying to locate the neutral axis for our section. So we're assuming we crack all the way up to the neutral axis right here. And so to find that, I just need to find C, which is going to be the summation of all the areas here, multiplied by the distance to the centroids of the, those areas, divided by, again, the sum of the areas. So rearranging that equation a little bit and moving this term to the other side, I'm going to have C, and then my sum of areas is going to be BC. So that is my concrete block right here. Width is B, and then C is its depth. That's just a rectangle. And then plus I have my compression steel, that's N minus one times AS prime. And then I have my tension steel, that's N times AS. And this has to be equal to the summation of area times distance to those centroids of the area. So the first area is the rectangle BC, and it has a centroid of one half C down from the top. And then my next area is N minus one times AS prime. The distance from the top, we'll call that D prime. In this case, D prime is 2.25 inches. My last area is the tension steel. So that's N times AS times distance D. And in this case, my distance D is 21.625 inches down from the top. So substituting all the values in there, we'll have C and it's gonna be multiplied by 12 times C and I'll leave the units off here just for making this a little bit easier to read, plus 5.45 plus 17.05 is going to be equal to six times C squared plus uh, area of compression steel is 5.45 and the distance is 2.25. And then last term is 17.05 square inches multiplied by its distance of 21.625. And we'll notice that C in here is found here, here, and right here, it is a quadratic equation. We can substitute this into any quadratic equation solver that you can find. And so in interest of brevity, I'm just gonna present the answer for this. It is 6.31 inches for my depth to neutral axis right there. So now that I have that, I can find my cracked moment of inertia. Cracked moment of inertia I cracked is going to be equal to one third BC cubed. And then I also need to add on my compression steel and tension steel terms. So the compression steel term is going to be the area, which is N minus one times AS prime times the distance that compression steel is from my neutral axis. So that's D prime minus C quantity squared. And then I'm also gonna to have to do the same thing for my tension steel. So N times AS multiplied by D minus C, that quantity squared. So plugging in all those numbers, we have one third times 12 inches times 6.31, and that's gonna be cubed. And then my compression steel area is 5.45. The distance that is being translated is 6.31 minus 2.25 inches squared. I changed the order on that, but again, it's being squared, so it's always gonna be positive, so I can be a little bit lazy there. Last term is going to be the tension steel, 17.05, and then multiplied by its distance squared, which is 21.625 minus 6.31 inches, that quantity squared. And altogether, we calculate this to be 5,094 inches to the fourth. And that's the only number on this page that I'm gonna to have to carry forward. I don't really need to know that depth to neutral axis, but we do need to know that 5,094 cracked moment of inertia. Now that I have my cracked and uncracked section properties, it's time to calculate the effective moment of inertia, which is accounting for that balance between how much of my beam is cracked versus uncracked. And I'm going to calculate this for two different load scenarios, dead load alone and dead plus live load. So remember we're calculating live load deflection, but I'm never going to have live load acting just on its own on my beam. The dead load's always gonna be there. So in order to calculate the correct level of cracking, I can't just put live load on there. I have to consider the difference between dead plus live and then just dead alone. So that's what we're gonna do here. And the first thing I need is my applied moment MA. So because this is a simply supported beam, my MA is just 1 8 WL squared. And so in this case for dead load alone, that's 0 0.3 kips per foot for loading. Span length is 30 feet, gotta square that. And my moment here is going to be 33.75 kip feet. 
Now I want to check that against my cracking moment and specifically two thirds my cracking moment to see if I have cracking. So two thirds of the cracking moment, if we calculate that out, it is 33.9 kip feet, which is slightly higher than my MA. So no cracking in this beam whatsoever. So because I have no cracking, I'm just going to be using I effective is equal to I gross for the uncracked section. And that is 13,824 inches to the fourth. So no need to use any equation. We have an uncracked section, so use I gross for your cracked moment inertia. In fact, if you do put this in the equation, you're gonna get the wrong number. So don't do that. <laughs> Just put in I gross. Now for my dead plus live load, I have to find that applied moment. And instead of having 0.3 kips per foot, I'm gonna have 0.3 from the dead plus 0.9 from the live. No load factors here. So that's just 1.2 kips per foot is the total sum of my loads multiplied by 30 feet squared to get that applied moment of 135 kip feet. Now that's obviously much greater than two thirds M crack. So we have a cracked section and therefore, because it's cracked, I need to use my equation for I effective. So I effective is going to be I crack divided by one minus, and there's gonna be a two thirds M crack divided by M A. That term's gotta be squared. And then I'm gonna multiply that by one minus I crack divided by I gross. So substituting all the values in there, I'm going to leave the units off just to make this a little bit simpler. It's 5194. That is inches to the fourth though. Divided by one minus two thirds of M crack. We just found that was 33.9 kip feet. And my applied moment was 135. Got to square that. And that's going to be multiplied by one minus 5094 inches to the fourth divided by I gross, which is 13824. And if I calculate that number out, it is 5,306 inches to the fourth. So that's pretty close to I cracked, which is basically saying that this beam is pretty much all cracked, which makes sense. The moment here, 135 kip feet is quite a bit larger than 33.9 kip feet. Now using those I effective values, I am going to calculate my deflections. So again, this is a simply supported beam. So calculating the deflection of a simply supported beam, we can just look this up in a table of equations, which would be five times the applied load times length to the fourth power divided by 384 E sub C times I sub E. So E sub C is my modulus of my concrete and then I sub E is the moment of inertia. And I'm gonna do this once again separately for the dead load only case versus the dead plus live case, because I have to take that difference. So if I'm calculating my dead load displacement, we'll call that delta D, this is going to be five times my load is 0 0.3 kips per foot. I'm gonna to wanna to change everything into inches, so I'm gonna multiply that by one foot per 12 inches, so basically dividing by 12 to make sure that I cancel out my feet units and I have kips per inch. And then the length, I'm also gonna change into inches. So that's 30 feet times 12 inches per foot and take that all to the fourth power. Everything in the denominator has the right units because it's already in kips and inches. So that's ready to go. It's 384 times 4,031 KSI was my modulus. And then moment of inertia I sub E for the dead load case we found was 13,824 inches to the fourth because this beam is uncracked under dead load only. So plugging through those numbers, this is 0 0.098 inches of deflection under dead load only. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for my dead plus live. So considering dead plus live, same equation. The only difference is 1.2 kips per foot. That's gonna be my applied load. I still need to divide that by 12 to make sure I'm in the right units. And then length is still 30 feet times 12 inches per foot and take that to the fourth power divided by 384 times same modulus 4031 ksi but new moment of inertia because now i have a lot more cracking in my beam so this is 5306 inches to the fourth and running through those numbers this is 1.023 inches for the total displacement under dead plus live loading.
Now we're ready for the final step, calculating our immediate live load deflection. So again, this is just gonna be a difference, difference between my total deflection under dead plus live minus that deflection under dead alone. And so this is 1.023 inches minus 0.098 inches. And that of course is 0.925 inches. So that is our final immediate deflection due to live load only. Let's see if this is allowable. We assumed back in the beginning that we're looking at floors not supporting or attached to non-structural elements. So my allowable limit is going to be L over 360 for this. So L over 360 is going to be equal to 30 feet. Uh, make sure you multiply that still by 12 inches per foot because I want to make sure that I'm calculating a number in inches divided by 360, and that is equal to one inch. Now, one inch is greater than my live load displacement of 0 0.925 inches, so therefore we are okay, and this beam is allowable per the code for deflections. And that is how you calculate the deflections of a reinforced concrete beam under live loading. As always, I hope you learned something. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.